Hello. Um, this is, uh, I hope this is uh, going to be a uh, discussion about uh, fuse uh, pass through. Um, it's a feature that's uh, long been requested uh, because lots of fuse file systems are just passing through data from underlying file systems. So they're, they're not changing anything from the files but uh, doing something to the directory structure or the metadata and um, <coughs> this, uh, right now, if, if a fuse file system does that, all I.O. goes uh, to, uh, to the uh, user space server by request and uh, obviously that's, that's slower than if a uh, file could be di directly read by the kernel. And uh, <laughs> okay. So the most, uh, uh, this means that the uh, server needs to tell the kernel where the, where, what file it needs to pass. One interesting question is uh, what should be the granularity of the mapping? Um, should it be just whole files or could it could be blocks or byte ranges? Um, if, if we have uh, more gran granular mapping than a file, uh, it, it could uh, enable implementing block-based file systems as well because uh, then we could have, we could have uh, uh, parts, of the, parts of the block, um, parts of the device mapped to uh, files in the file system. Um, another question is how to establish the mapping. Uh, one issue with that is that uh, currently uh, replies uh, from the server are done by write and uh, if we pass open file descriptors through that, uh, that could be a security issue. So uh, one way to resolve that is to uh, implement an I IOCTO, uh, implement this one IOCTO. So pass, passing file, file descriptors uh, uh, which, uh, which establish the mapping uh, I, I should be done via, via an IOCTO. Um, sorry? Can you elaborate on why? Well, why this needs to be done? Okay. Um, the, the basic, that's disgusting. The basic problem is that so somebody can hijack a write and then send a random FD through the write. So you, you can trick a program into sending, into writing random data. Um, and th there are examples of this given in the exploit. Um, so you trick, trick a high privileged program to send random data, which, which it, so it sends the FD it did not want to send, and then the f that gets attached to the file. I must admit I was kind of skeptical, but I wasn't going to argue with Jan Horn. I just it was easier just to do what he said rather than <laughs> <laughs> trying to argue that one. Because it's much, much, much harder to trick a random program. You can trick any program into doing a write. Well, that's not true. You can trick many programs into doing a write because programs write random stuff all the time. Tricking a, tricking a program into calling a specific IOCTO is a much more challenging problem. I mean, and you know, the examples are just to, just to pseudo stuff to, um, to, uh, to, a, to, a, to, to, to the correct um, FD. The, the second notifier has uses IOCTOs for uh, data transmission that is not like uh, file data, r random file data, but structured data and contains file descriptors and so on. We use IOCTOs for that as well for exactly the, the same reason. So, so this is convinced. I, I, I was convinced in the end that this was a valid, very valid objection. Only these ones allow you to 
um, hook it up to a different SD. Um, Because the issue, because the issue is that if if you can if you can tell the kernel like okay, so normally if you want to say pseudo pseudo blah blah blah, write to some random, <laughs> write to some. <laughs> if you want to say uh, write to some random file as as root, if you do pseudo and you try to redirect it, the unprivileged process has to open that file for writing, which means you have to pass the security check for opening for writing. But if you're talking about a, a thing where you can now say, you can now trick a process into basically. Effectively being able to say that you can do, um, uh, you can get a process to do an administrative operation, which changes how other things happen on the system. That does not, like, how do I put it? Um, effectively, effectively, if you can, if you can get, um, uh, basically the problem is the indirection. So it's like, if you're just writing to a regular file, that you have to write check on the file, and it's fine because you're writing to that file. But in this case, if you're writing to a file, but you write a special magical thing to it, effectively you can trick a process into sending administrative commands, which is different, effectively. That, that's my, that would be my answer to that. I mean, th th there, are ex there are examples of exploits where you had like member dipper and stuff like that, which like having a, a process that can write to a random file can cause issues. Like there, 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 is, there is a history of that sort of thing. Is it because of the permission check? I mean, because permissions are checked on open, not on write, so. And I, but I imagine you do a permission check on IFS. So it, I, I don't think it's a permission check. It's it's about um, <laughs> yeah yeah I <laughs> so so I, I yeah. So Jan Horn has a very good explanation. I can I take I can take that out and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, so that's uh, basically we have uh, we have two approaches to uh, establishing this mapping. Uh, with the few few prototypes, uh, um, I used uh, uh, an IO process to uh, create a mapping. For, uh, for just a register uh, file descriptor, which uh, can later be used uh, uh, to map the file. And uh, because BGF took a different route for this and uh, uses IOCO to completely uh, reply, the, uh, to, to send a lookup reply with this IOCO because uh, they they use uh, the protocol which uh, which the mapping is established during lookup. Another question is uh, uh, the lifetime of the mapping. It's uh, I guess it's related. Um, who stood uh, did explicit uh, explicit thread on of this mapping? Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what things BGF does, but. You will explain. <laughs> and uh, uh, again, one one concern with this uh, I have is uh, how uh, the file map mapped uh, open files are visible to the outside world because if we just uh, add a mapping, it uh, it it will create an open file inside the kernel or at least uh, reference to a, a path. And but but uh, it's not visible anymore, so you can't see it with LSOF, and uh, uh, it's it's uh, just we have a, a fuse file. You will see uh, that as it's open, but you can't see the file that is uh, referred to by uh, by that uh, fuse file. AFS, AF Unix would have the same issues because you can send the keys over that that you can't then see. Yeah, but I can, I can confirm when you're developing something like this, not being able to see the file handle is really the way it came. Because you leak them, you lose them, and then you have no idea who's got them. 
Yes. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying it's, you know, this, this is actually, I hadn't really thought about this, but this has been a big problem in developing community computers. It's not a big problem. It's been a pain in the butt developing community computers in Europe. And it would be nice to solve. I want to say as well that there, um, this is, there is a way you can cause this um, through if you create way too long to get into in 30, 30 minutes, but basically there is a way which you can construct a mount namespace that is completely hidden, and in that you can then bind mount a file, a file descriptor and then close it, but keep the handle to the file open in such a way that there's no way for you to detect it as it processes on the, on the host. So like LSOV can't see it. It is possible to do, but the point is, is that yeah, I think that this is like a more general problem that I think should be fixed, by the way. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's a few specific problem. Like there needs to be some way. This is, I mean, this is going all the way back to the like, how do I unmount my 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 USB properly <laughs> problem, effectively. Um, and yeah, it's something we should fix. But I, I don't know if um if it's a few specific. It seems to me like it's a more generic problem, of the fact that we have LSOV as like a hack to get. Our, anyway, sorry, that's all. Yeah. So to overlay that, this is sort of resolved by having a file descriptor. Then you don't need, you don't see the underlying file open, but you see the so you have an idea, and this is sort of solves the fast to USB, and, and also closed fast to USB personally, but not the uh, DTF. Okay, so so Ovelia fast, uh, it's uh, you can see, you can you can derive which file is referring to because the mount, uh, because it's specified in the mount. For uh, pass through, you can't derive it because. Uh, it's it's the mapping is established by the by the server, and it and it should be ar arbitrary. Yeah. Our namespace is also a problem. So if you've got you're trying to pass a file descriptor from a fuse daemon that's in one namespace to a mount that's in another mount namespace. Any other sort of namespace. In, in why, what sense would this be a problem? Sorry. Uh, I was asking, could it be a problem? So you do LS, you, you, you show the FD somehow, you do LSF of it, but it refers to a mount that is not in your namespace, for example. Or is it, or it refers to something that's in a different user namespace to you, different network namespace, whatever. can either require specific permission checks or we can do what we already do today, which is like the sender must, or the receiver or whatever must be in the user namespace hierarchy, for example, of the, of the seed phone. Yeah, uh, did I understand correctly that this is a, a question about uh, permission? So what, so. What happens if you see it and it appears to point to something in your namespace but actually refers to something in a different namespace? And there could be confusion there. Namespaces are just tolerable. <laughs> well, what, I mean. <laughs> okay, so, so I will leave. To my understanding, this is what the Fuse FD pass through solution does, right? But this is a different proposal, and there are patches for the FD pass through. And what question of mine and for this session, and do we need, uh, Miklos, uh, do we need the FD pass through as well as the DTF, or that's that's a question, an open question. I didn't hear any of that because I was trying to get the screen to show up on the other screen. <laughs> but anyways, this is the um, kind of how you interact with uh, setting up Fuse DTF initially. So we have a, um, a block that we uh, attach to the like, uh, lookup response where uh, at the moment we like, pass in the name that the uh, like, DTF program was registered under. 
And then for the backing directory, at the moment we're passing a, uh, an, an FTA that we're basically just using to get access to the uh, backing inode. So the lifetime of the connection is whatever the lifetime of that inode is. We don't currently allow you to, well, that's like the backing path, yeah, sorry. We're, yeah. Uh, we don't currently allow that to change over like the lifetime of the program. You'd have to uh, like invalidate the, the uh, existing connection. And uh, we also require that uh, this goes through an ioctal path, like, uh, like you mentioned, where basically all we're doing is flagging this as this came from an ioctal and then going through all of the like usual fuse, uh, like it goes the same place that the fuse right would go. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, going back to the uh, basic overview of what Fuse BPF is doing. So um, we have a, uh, a goal to try to be as easy to use as Fuse is. So uh, nice defined entry points. And uh, you know, despite how complicated this graph is compared to uh, what it is for fuse. Uh, so we have a set of calls which for the most part is mirroring, mirroring what the uh, fuse user space calls would be doing. And we provide two hooks for a BPF program to, I guess, alter what the uh, parameters you're passing in are. So we have uh, one up front where you can change what some of the input arguments are and then at the end where you can uh, alter what some of the uh, return codes are. So for instance, in something like a uh, you know, reading from a file, in the pre-filter you might say, oh, for like this amount of space, we can handle it uh, directly like just go directly to the lower file. Whereas for like some other offset, you might need to defer to user space. And then, you know, an ex example of something you might do in a, uh, a post filter, you know, for a read, maybe uh, there's like a section that you want to redact the information there or alter something. Yeah, so the, uh, the lifespan of the uh, connection to backing is the lifespan of the inode. Or like, uh, I think for, uh, we have a connection between backing file as well, right? Yeah. Each object, inode file and path is linked to the corresponding backing inode file and path. Except the path also has the mount on it. There's, uh, there's no way to use this to uh, trick the uh, fuse uh, daemon into lo loading arbitrary BPF scripts, perhaps remotely. Uh, so the way the linkage currently works is that uh, you have to register that program up front. So we can use, uh, as under this system, uh, it can use anything that has been registered with Fuse specifically. So you have to have like uh, set that up at some point. Uh, so there's, I don't know, I've just been using a BPF tools struct off register for. I mean, this is no more dangerous than any other BPF. Which <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, one thing I did not mention. Uh, so at the moment there is this kind of difference between you know, interacting with the fuse daemon via going through fuse BPF, your context is different, which we plan to adjust by like, you know, grabbing the uh, the daemon context and like the fuse init reply or something like that, so that we can, you know, be accessing files in the same sort of context that we would as the uh, daemon. That, that, is a, that is not an answer to the question that you asked. 
is something that I forgot to mention. <laughs> so question from my understanding. Mm -hmm. If I look at this diagram, then to me, it looks like you can use Fuse BPF without any BPF because it's basically this idea that Fuse is just the pre-filter and the post-filter. Is that correct? Like uh, yeah, that is, uh, is correct. So if you remove all of the BPF, what you're left with is kind of a direct pass-through that you're not interacting with in, other in any uh, way, which is kind of like maybe a more expensive bind mount. Uh, but what's the role of the pre-filter and the post-filter in the Fuse daemon then? Can't you, what does that do? Um, Can I try oh, to explain? It's oh, sure. The idea is, of course, you want to offload many, many, maybe most of the operations. But of course, it's not useful to pass through all of them, which is what the patches do. But you want to be able to say, I want to pass through everything except the name, or everything except this file. So you could either walk into the m options of fuse whatever you want, or you can write a BPF program that encodes this logic. That's one of the uses, maybe the main use. Yeah, case, but part think. of the problem comes from having this talk before the one where I say what BPF, what Fuse BPF is, <laughs> which is a, yeah, so if you have a time machine, I would recommend going to the Wednesday talk first. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, the, the calls to user space that we have here are different than the like uh, regular Fuse path. So these are more a limited uh, sense of, instead of a BPF pre-filter that like, just deals with these, uh, this limited set of arguments that it's allowed to change. Uh, you know, maybe you're trying to do something that like, BPF doesn't currently handle, or like, the verifier yells at you when you try to do it and you want to prototype something out. So you would write the uh, pre-filter or post-filter in, uh, in user space to do that, and then it would uh, you know, do some alteration to the, uh, the arguments that you pass into the backend call. And uh, you know, go going back to the read and write examples, which we have not fully implemented yet, but you know, the idea there is that you would be able to say, uh, you know, say instead of reading from you know, this amount of space, we're just going to handle this amount in this chunk and then like this, which maybe you want to do different things for there. We have, uh, we have plans eventually to allow for multiple backing files. That's not currently set up. We currently just have a like one-to-one -one sort of uh, mapping. Yeah, yeah, that's um, pretty much exactly uh, for that. Is that. That would be during open, I assume. Um, yeah, during uh, any, um, like, we, um, you know, there, some there, there is another patch that's doing that during open. That's what I call the pass through FD patches. They're in Android right now, and there's patches that being passed, uh, posted, and it's not going to have streams, but their approach is uh, different. It, it attaches the filter during look lookup. Yeah, so um, it, it kind of extends what uh, what that approach was doing to everything. So, for instance, you could do a similar thing for the directory structure, where um, you know, let's say you have a, a directory where there's one f uh, file that uh, you know you don't want uh, you know, certain users to have access to even like knowing ex its existence. So you would be able to like purge that from reader and. Uh, I believe normally you would get a different error code if you were to try to access that. Now, of course, if like you have read-write access, like there's nothing you can really do there. But the, uh, the reason is uh, that I'm asking is it's, it's eerily reminiscent of uh, in in some details of uh, a general proposal that uh, a while back, uh, where you could attach BPF. Well, basically, a BPF hook could run during open. Mm -hmm. And then during open, you could say, uh, based on a BPF program, refuse, uh, refuse the open system call or redirect it to somewhere else. Yeah, so this is, is effectively allowing you to, uh, to do that for like open. 
like we would have the uh, the ability to say in like I think that would probably that would be under the uh, the pre filter of do not do this thing. You would just return an error code. Now I could scroll to the, uh, I have a lot of BPF specific stuff that would take a lot more than two minutes yeah. to cover. I mean, maybe also yeah. for your next talk, it's more appropriate. <laughs> uh, are there any questions about this thing that I have not fully explained until Wednesday? <laughs> uh, well, I have a question that I read mm -hmm. before, maybe for you, Klaus. Do you think there is a need for a sort of open pass-through in addition to this work, or do you need to combine them? Because I, I just say for everyone, the, the Android patch that it helps to, it, it deals with pass-through of read and write, which is the most performance-related thing. Uh, Oh, no, it's not that, okay. I don't consider Android upstream for some reason. <laughs> that, uh, what I would love best is that uh, some sort of pass through uh, is first implemented in Fuse, and uh, Fuse BPF is, is built on top of that. So, uh, because uh, then we, we, we have uh, one solution which is uh, standalone, which doesn't have uh, BPF in it, and uh, it's also because I guess that that's that's the simpler part, mm -hmm. doing the pass through. And if we have that, uh, it I guess it's it's easier to add, uh, much easier to add uh, the BPF filters. So I, I guess we probably will structure the patches that way for your acceptance, for, for the acceptance. <laughs> um, I mean. To a certain extent, setting up everything for pass-through means taking all of the fuse calls, constructing how to handle them in a pass-through mode. And then all we have to add is the two lines of code that say, and pass this to a filter. So while well, we, well, we'll do it the way you ask, it's just as an observation, it's actually, I was gonna say 90%, not fair at all, because the last six months playing with BPF. Yeah, I, I've, I've tried to structure the pa patch set currently so that we have uh, the kind of just direct pass through uh, up front. I would need to look at some of the details of how the um, the other like uh, the other pass through, uh, how the interface works to know if we're like completely at parity there. And uh, well, we don't plan to allow change. We don't not plan to, but we don't currently plan to allow changing of the backing file, which is the difference. Um, and we're out of time, I think. <laughs>